We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Samsung Discussion Panel, Digital Way Building a Fat or a Real Need for Every Generation. And digital well-being is uh, um, ability to keep maintenance um, between uh, online and offline, and then, and then in the ideal world, uh, technology and internet support uh, everyday life. Um, then rather leading uh, astray and doing harm. However, technology and internet. Um, is a, is a tool, uh, it's not a reward. We uh, at the Samsung company um, consider uh, digital being as a very important uh, issue. That's why we educate uh, users about wise and conscious uh, digital particip participation. Uh, in Poland, we have a program, Well Connected, uh, which is known as uh, Samsung Cyfrowy Contact, uh, which uh, doesn't offer off-the-shelf recipes. Uh, however, uh, it invites users uh, to develop um, their own uh, approaches to a sustainable digital conception. So uh, today I invite you um, to uh, immerse in your, yourself uh, in technology, in internet, even be hooked your, on your smartphones, but in a sustainable way. Today we will discuss the digital being uh, topic. Uh, we will find out uh, how different generation uh, perceives uh, online presence and how they cultivate uh, healthy habits. So please uh, uh, accept my our uh, warm welcome and welcome our experts. So guys, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Magda. Thank you for introduction of our panel. Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to the first day of IGF, Internet Government Forum, which is hosted this year in Poland, in beautiful city of Katowice in Silesia. Um, in beautiful city, and it's snowing today for the first time in this year, so I hope it's also going to be an uh, interesting opening for the ODI IGF. And the first day, the first day is um, devoted to challenges uh, of the youngest generation and digitalization. So that's why our uh, today uh, panel about well-being, digital well-being, it is going to be quite um, much connected with with young generation and. I may say we all are young <laughs> in digital world, which is just changing. And that's why our panelists, our extremely interesting panelists are from all the generations. And uh, let me just introduce them. So first of all, we have Beata Borutska, Mondra Babcia, smart grandma, uh, she is a blogger, she is a creator of Silver TV. Uh, Daria Durkowska. Daria is a student from the Jan Trzeci Sobieski School in Jastrzębie Zdrój. We have um, Nikodem Bonca Tomaszewski. She, he is a CEO of Exato, it's a public sector. Uh, Marcin Perfuński blogger and uh, and creator of Super Tata TV. It's Super Dad uh, TV. And he is a Super Dad. He's got five, 
He has five daughters. Yeah, so super, super dad. And Franciszek Jaskulski, a Franek is a student of psychology and a graduate of the same school as Daria. So yes, very interesting panelists. Um, I'm Sylvia Chupkowska. I'm editor of Spider's Web Plus magazine. It's an online outlet dedicated to digital issues, how digitalization is changing education, social life, economics, politics, well, whole world. And I'm going to be a host of today's uh, discussion. But it's not everything. In the end, we will have a special guest, Professor Jacek Przalski, um, pedagogo and researcher from University of Adam Mickiewicz in Poznań. Um, Professor Przalski will have a short summary of our discussion. And last but not least, we have Agata Jakuszko Sobacka. Yagata is from Draw the Words, and Yagata is going to prepare a um, map of our thoughts and um, uh, somehow summary of the discussion. So I'm so eager to see it in the in the end. And um, I have one question for all our viewers here in Katowice, but also uh, online. Um, I we we prepared a small um, a small pool online pool for you guys. Uh, you can find it this study on the web menti.com. There is a code on this on this site to use. Uh, if you put the code, there is a question to you, and I'll be very grateful if you can answer this question. Maybe in the end of our panel wherever you find it uh, easy for you. And the question is, have you become more careful about your digital well-being since the outbreak of COVID-19? And there are three answers to, to choose. Yes, I limited the time I spend online. Yes, but I failed to change my habits. And no, I don't feel such a need. This is also the question I'm going to ask our panelists, but... In the very beginning, I have a short question, such a warm up. Um, ladies and gentlemen, do you remember, do, are, you, are you able to somehow um, uh, measure how much time do you spend online each day? What is your screen time? And have you ever in the last few months or a few last weeks feel guilty about the amount of time you spend online? Maybe we start from Beata. Yes, why not? <laughs> Hello, everybody. And I have a pleasure to be here with you and represent the silver generation. Uh, and I'm a blogger, so my screen time is, I think, pretty long. And being together online with my society is at least five, six hours a day, definitely. But, but then I have a pleasure time, pleasure screen time, and I'm doing stupid things, procrastinating my sleep time. And this is the moment when I feel guilty, especially in the morning. Because you're tired. I am tired and I just feel the lack of sleeping time. So I'm tired uh, and it's and this is a moment when I feel guilty. Too much stupid things on the screen, which are giving me nothing. Nothing except pleasure. I'm playing cards, I'm scrolling the TikTok. Uh, so this is this is my very, very honest answer. Thank you. So five, six hours uh, of such a, um, such a spending time on work and, and some things that you don't find uh, as a, well, just, just a pleasure. Yes, five, six hours. It's not so bad, I think. Uh, Nikodem, and, and your, your uh, screen time. Well, uh, I turned off my screen time during pandemic because it was very frustrating to, uh, to see it all the time. Uh, basically, at the peak of pandemic, uh, 
it showed me that I use my computer, iPad or iPhone all the time, except when uh, I am sleeping or eating. And I wonder how is it possible because I have some hobbies uh, which demands, I don't know, manual work or some sports. And uh, I don't need, uh, I thought that I don't need a smartphone during the time. And then I remembered that, for example, um, uh, as a sports shooter, I have a special app which tracks my progress. So it's always on. Uh, the same I am climbing. I use uh, climbing videos or podcasts to show me some techniques and so on and so on. So I felt like in the hair movie, I think it was a movie when uh, artificial intelligence is all around you and, and it's totally uh, aiding your life. Uh, and I thought about it uh, and how can I uh, limit this time? And I think that as a CEO for me, it's I am a CEO, I am father of three daughters. Uh, I have lots of hobbies, some other responsibilities. And for me, it would mean to slow my life down. And this is not possible just. I will ask you about your ideas of um, better uh, using this screen time, but only right now. How much? 10, 12 hours? At least. At least. Uh, what can I say? I have the same problem, but <laughs> Marcin, uh, five daughters, blogger, um radio work at radio uh, i i just don't know where when can you spend more time on online because you've got so much on your plate so do you remember what's your screen time uh yes um, um... My job is uh, needs it uh, internet, so uh, I think I spent uh, time on my work six, maybe eight hours at the day. Uh, but uh, at night, <laughs> I'm scrolling uh, social media, so um, uh, I don't know uh, how long I. Uh, watching TikTok or uh, Instagram. But are you able to somehow uh, summarize, is it more than six, hour, six hours per no, day? No, 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 no. Two, two or three hours. Two or three hours. Uh, to the entertainment. For the entertainment, For yes. Entertainment. And summary, is it closer to six or closer to closer ten? Closer to ten, to ten. Closer to ten, okay. And but I'm not uh, feel guilty. You don't feel guilty. No, I'm just adapted to the situation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the youngest generation, Daria, what's your screen time? Uh, well, I'm a student. So in the recent uh, weeks, last two weeks, uh, we had um, online school, online learning. So uh, school has taken me six to eight hours every day and another two or three uh, for my homework and another maybe two for uh, entertainment or studying so it really adds up to a big number like 12 hours a day but however it is only in uh, uh, weekdays so my weekends are I'm trying to be completely off weekends with uh, offline yes offline weekends it's an idea um franek franciszek what's yes. your screen time so i'm a university student so i i have a learning only on my university so that's probably about uh, four hours three days in a week and that goes only for university then sometimes I have uh, a job to to do on the internet. Then it's maybe one, two hours a day. And I try uh, really not to entertain myself on my cell phone on my or on my PC. I'm really trying not to use the internet for this. So I really try to be more offline. So my screen time average is maybe two to three hours a day is really not much. I'm really surprised. 
even though we speak a little bit about uh, our uh, habits uh, online, but still two or three hours for 22 years, guy. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, uh, it's it's your way of managing your online and offline time, and it's really interesting. And that is my next question. And maybe you can start, Franciszek. What are your ideas of uh, managing online life uh, to not feel guilty, to be able to do everything you need online, and um, um not to have any um, problems connected with work, with, with school and so on, and with, with, with meeting your friends right now, but because also our whole life more or less during this last two years became uh, uh, virtual very often. So what are your, um, what are your uh, special ideas? I think that uh, you should ask yourself a question why do I do this? Why do I sit uh, on my phone? Why do I check my social media sites? What, what it gives me? Like, I just uh, found out that scrolling Instagram or Facebook really is giving me nothing. It's just wasting my time, wasting uh, a lot of time from my day that I can spend probably learning something getting to know more things, gathering more experiences in the things I like to do. So I really try to stop my life because when I use the phone and I use the phone a lot, I was using earlier before the pandemic or maybe a little bit earlier, I was using the phone almost 10 hours a day. And I just, I was in such a rush that I didn't have a time to do the things I loved to do before. So I just try to stop my life, like to slow down a bit. And I found out that using the phone is not helping in that. So I really try to do other things. And I just uh, started to put the phone away and focus on something else, not to be distracted by it because We've got a lot of notifications on our phones and it's distracting us uh, all the time. And we are just not having time to do the things we love, the things we need, the things we want to do, because we are, we are still in touch on the phone. So you decided on somehow a diet from, from yes. the yeah, online diet, something like that. Yeah, I can say that. Yeah. Um, Nikodem. Do you also try to practice some kind of uh, this diet uh, ideas to balance your online and offline time? For example, you don't use uh, smartphones during the weekends or, or maybe you switch, switch your smartphone for, for, for evening or some other ideas? No, not really. I am the guy that uh, I think that the experience is different for those who remember the times before internet, like me, and for those who were born in the in the with the, who are basically the same age or a little bit younger than iPhone or other smartphones. And for me, the the experience of how the computer will change computers will or will change the world was like when I downloaded in the nineties the Monopoly version for the computer. And I could play the, normally it's a game which you celebrate, you play two, three hours with your friends. And I played with the computer and it was 10 minutes and the whole session of Monopoly was gone. And I said, wow, I am going to play with computer. I, I'm going to, 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 to turn to the computer games only because it's much faster and much, much, much more exciting. Uh, and I think that, um, and why I don't fight? Because I don't think that the internet or the smartphones or the computers are, are inherently bad or something that is enslaving us or other in some sort of AI enslavement. It's just a tool like any other. Uh, and the problem is that in the internet sphere, we have a clash of two, uh, of two waves. One of the huge wave is a wave uh, which is which I called commercial. 
uh, which is driven by the commercial need to enhance turbo capitalism and to make us a good customers, obedient consumers who instantly consume, consume, consume all the time. And this, oh, oh, this part of internet, I think this is uh, this is the bad part. This is the bad part. It causes the distraction. It keeps you on the edge all the time. It tells you that you have to buy new things to be happy and so on and so on. During the pandemic, it just flourished because online shopping went crazy, e-commerce, e and, and we can see it in Poland. Uh, right now, the, more, the biggest booming startups in Poland are the e-commerce e uh, platforms. And the other wave is a much smaller wave, which can give you the real knowledge, uh, real skill, which pass on the real skills. Uh, the internet change uh, basically how we gain knowledge um, dramatically. Because when I was way young and I had a, I know, I was a teen teenager and I had a new hobbies in the 90s, in the 90s, I had to go to the library, uh, do some research. I had to find people to teach me some new things and so on and so long. It's, it took a lot of time. Right now, basically on the, uh, on the YouTube, or using Google and, and other tools, other apps, I can learn new things very fast. Then the, tra knowledge of, uh, the, the transfer of knowledge and skills is instantaneous. And I think that uh, this is fantastic. And this is a part out of, of the internet which we should cherish. Uh, but the problem is that it's hard because the commercial wave is much stronger, much more cool, uh, much faster, and uh, it always drags us uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to itself. It's like I noticed that, for example, if you have a hobby and you watch the, the feed on Instagram, for example, after two months, you are convinced that you have to buy many new things to be a go to be good in this hobby. And even it could be running. For running, you need at least I don't know five hundred euros to spend to to run. I mean, it, it's crazy. But I understand it's not only the e-commerce that you are talking as in this part of the, the digital world that is getting more and more um, overwhelming. It's also the digital platforms as platforms, uh, algorithm in social media, um, uh, VOD, and so on and so on. Yes, yes. yes. It's the, I think that problem began when the Google was uh, defined its business model as being an other platforms for advertisement. This was the moment which was like a breaking point how the uh, how the internet should be uh, should be uh, shaped because Google is a really ingenious algorithm for search it's and uh, nobody uh, no nobody till, till now could uh, could repeat its uh, algorithms so it is in the, in terms of invention and innovation the google is just stunning but the, so it was like a great tool for the uh, in terms of uh, uh, in, uh, managing knowledge but the moment they uh, they started to think of the, their company as a may, uh, play uh, as a um, platform to sell ads, this is the mo and then uh, everybody repeated this model. This was the moment when the internet became commercial. Yes, <laughs> what can I say? But Beata, do you also see this commercial part of the internet as? Um... I don't want to use the word enemy, but as uh, something so overwhelming that you have to use some special uh, ways to to put yourself on, you know, the, the balance between online, online and offline. And if you have such ideas, what are they? Please share with us. I'm sure you have uh, gorgeous ideas. I'm sure. I'm not so sure as you are. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I am not an e-commerce uh, enemy, uh, animal. So, enemy uh, or animal? Animal. 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 <laughs> animal, not enemy. I'm not also an enemy of e-commerce. Uh, I like uh, real contact with people. So for me, uh, the most important thing is I love shopping, but real shopping because I love to speak with sellers, to speak with people in the shop, to try things, to uh, touch things. So of course I use an e-commerce platform and I make some shopping uh, on the internet, but it's not my hobby. 
So e-commerce is not what takes me, uh, what what what, uh, what uh, makes my screen time longer. Uh, more is uh, I'm looking for funny things, for interesting things. I want to be updated because I'm a uh, owner and the leader of internet TV. So I'm looking for interesting subjects for things I can show to my society. So it's scrolling, 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 reading. And when I'm, when also when I'm preparing the program for my TV, I have to get a, get to know what I will talk about with the expert I'm inviting for the program. So uh, I use the internet as a very useful tool for very fast getting to know whatever you want. Because if somebody is not taped in, is kicked out. So everything you can tape, you can have. But nevertheless, uh, I have a, let's say, a dietary supplement to, <laughs> to uh, make my screen time shorter. Is For instance, I stop taking my cellular phone for a walk with me. So when I go for a walk with friends or alone or a Nordic walking, before I had my cellular phone in the pocket. Today, nowadays, I just, I, I'm leaving the cellular phone at home. And it's a very good thing for me. The best thing is the isolation from the device. Because when I have the device, I compulsively I'm compulsively checking what's going on. So isolation from the device for me is the best way to uh, make my screen time shorter, but it's not the only one thing I'm doing. And the next thing is what I agree with Franek is to recap my mind why I'm doing this. And I think that our brain needs impulses because brain is hungry for impulses, different impulses. So I try to meditate a little bit, to calm down, to be much uh, calm. And when I'm when I'm I, when I have a life way well being, it includes the digital well being. So I try to like myself uh, in the real life more than me with a screen, and it helped me. Oh, it's very interesting, and I think we should focus on what you say, that our um, physical uh, well-being, mental well-being uh, is so, so, so connected with online uh, well-being and it, right now it's really hard to not to compare them. Yes, it's, it's just obvious. I have just one, one comment more that definitely the digital life should be a part of our life with the impact of the world part. All right. Okay. Marcin, do you have any, uh, your own solutions for, for, for this digital well-being? Uh, I have um, two or three moments of the day when I'm offline. It's uh, morning, evening, and uh, uh, in the middle of the day. Uh, morning siesta siesta during uh, the day online siesta i'm walking to the forest uh, what morning i'm uh, wake up make coffee drink kefir it's for me very important uh, talk uh, talking to my wife uh, greeting my children eating uh, breakfast and then i'm turn on internet one hour two hours uh and uh, downloading emails it, uh, and uh, start working. Uh, at evening, I turn on in, uh, turn off internet and uh, reading a book. Uh, at night, uh, I turn on internet and entertainment. entertainment. 
uh, watching movies and uh, scrolling uh, social media. But at uh, in the middle of the day, I'm turn on internet, uh, turn off internet, and I'm offline. Uh, I'm walking to the forest with my uh, two dogs. Uh, I'm uh, listening, singing, singing birds, feeling wind in my hair. <laughs> Uh, this is my um, solution for my well-being. Nature. Nature, Nature is and a... ana analog life. <laughs> analog life. Okay. Daria, you spend a lot of time, just as you said, uh, on your e-school. Probably there are lots of Zooms and other video calls. Do you have any... Uh, uh, any solutions how to manage this time because it's it can be overwhelming yes um well even if i tried i cannot limit my hours because school is mandatory and i need to be um present during my lessons and uh, i need to uh, do my homework because um well i don't want to have bad grades uh, but um, after school, when I'm uh, when I want to uh, learn something, on spend some time on my uh, projects or um, other after school activities, um, well, I try to um, get to have breaks to like get up from a uh, computer, talk with my parents or uh, go for a short walk, go skating and do other things that uh, aren't connected with the internet. And uh, during weekends, I try to turn off my phone completely, which uh, sometimes um, my teachers get mad because um, I'm not answering any emails. And um, I only answer emails from Monday to Friday. And after that, I really try to not turn on my laptop and spend time um, studying or uh, social media. Because uh, when it comes to social media, it's really easy to um, get down the hall and... Uh, spend like hours and hours uh, scrolling exactly like this is exactly like algorithm us us to want us to 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 act in the, the social media we all sometimes uh, even say about especially youtube algorithm that it's just a rabbit hole it's so easy to get inside and focus on another another movie another video yes just as this you said. So, so you are making um, some small breaks during the day and you, um, well, weekends are for you, not for work, not for school. Uh, this is your idea. I must tell you that I should listen to all our panelists and take to, to my heart what you are saying because I have a huge problem. I'm a journalist. I spent, I don't know, I I'm st stopped trying to count how much time because sometimes it's 14 sometimes it's 16 hours per day on online it's awful and i know it's too much um, but i also have my small ideas and i will share with you my one i my one um way that i'm mm, that i'm uh using for more than a year and a half and it's working it's connected with social media I spent too much time on social media before the COVID um, and it was really overwhelming for me. So I decided to use social media as a task, as a part of my job, as a part of my, uh, uh, my, my every day. So I use them in slots. I have three slots during the day for Twitter, uh, uh, Facebook, Instagram. And during these free slots, I don't do anything else. This, this is the time for our social media. And that's all. And after the slot, I'm not going to... Of course, there are some, some moments when it's happening so much because it's, well, it's journalist life. But normally, 
three, three times a day for 30 minutes and enough. Time's up, no more time for any uh, sophisticated, uh, intelligent thing to write on Twitter. It's enough. And it's working for me. The, this one thing is really working for me. So I think it's, it's, it's helpful if we find something small, even something small in our lives and try to, try to use it every day. But we uh, speak today about um, uh, digital insomnia. We speak about FOMO, well, this fear of missing out. We all have this more or less. We mention a little bit Zoom fatigue and the meaning of being overwhelmed by video calls. And we speak a lot about all this issue during the last two years. Um, but all you, my dear Paul and Liz, mentioned that you that the online life is bringing you so much good. It's not only problems. It's not only overwhelming and um, and feeling guilty about the screen time. So please, maybe Daria. What are the best things that really help, that really this online life are bringing to you? Why do you use this internet so much? <laughs> well, um, internet is really powerful source for knowledge for me. When um, I I have a lot of hobbies and uh, and when I wanted to learn, for example, knitting. So when I just search on YouTube, knitting tutorial for beginners, and in 20 minutes, I learned uh, basics and everything, and I could start um, knitting and be even um, good at it. Uh, so um, there are a lot of resources in the internet. Um, sometimes there are free, sometimes you have to pay fees. But, uh, for example, internet courses. There are thousands of thousands of thousands of internet uh, platforms with courses, and we can learn basically anything from the internet now. From Khan Academy to TEDx and on so, yes. so on and so on. And also practical courses, just as you said, on YouTube, wherever you want to find. This is wonderful. So knowledge and practical knowledge, yes? Wonderful. Nikodem, what's your pros for, for using this online life? Just like Daria said, it's a great way to, to transfer information and skills very fast. Uh, but and for me personally, it's a good, uh, it's a great tool. It's a, I think the only tool I can imagine to keep the very fast uh, life pace. Uh, it, it wouldn't be possible otherwise. Uh, yet maybe I will sound like an old man, but I think that basically... Today we say boomer. <laughs> boomer. No, I'm boomer. I think it's after World War II. This is my parents. I'm not that old yet. But uh, yeah, as a boomer, as a, okay, I, I will represent boomers. I think that that basically the commercial part, especially for the generation, which is, uh, which is, which is the same age as, uh, as smartphones, uh, and I think that for them, basically, we should treat um, th those tools uh, just like we treat uh, alcohol or tobacco or anything else. So I think that it it should be um, it should be limited for the for the kids because the commercial part is just too strong, too fast, and too smart. Uh, it will always adapt, and just like you said, it will always follow you into the rabbit hole and suck you in. Uh, and I have a friend, he's a teacher, and he said that, for example, he has a problem with his students because uh, he tried to engage them in some, some, some sort of real activities. Uh, and he had a problem because for them, they, he said, let's go to, to the mountains for the hike. And they all watched before uh, they start to prepare for it. And they watched first uh, hikes in the Tatras, then in the Alps, then in Himalayas. And after that, they said that walking the little mountains like Gorze is no no fun. It's not not real experience. That it's better for them to watch somebody and relive this experience with him than to have a much smaller experience in the real life. And I think that this is a a problem for the younger generation. 
uh, and I observe it with my own kids. Uh, at first, I was very open, and my oldest daughter didn't have any limits on smartphone. And I uh, joke that my youngest daughter will get her smartphone during uh, on the wedding as a get wedding gift. So maybe this is uh, too extremes, uh, but I think that should be it. It should be limited, and uh, because otherwise we will not cope with it. At least at the stage the internet and the whole e-commerce machine and the social platforms as a constructed as a way to sell more products, which basically they are. This is not something that we are going to. Mm, uh, to, to have any control of and and, and this will lead, lead us uh, absolutely nowhere uh okay but still what you say skills and the, the platform to to connecting what i understand between different uh, uh different people but also with different skills yes this is important but limiting this limiting this especially towards children kids and and adolescents Mm, okay. What's your idea? What is, what are the what are the yes of course grandma. Grandma <laughs> uh, sounds the best, terrible. Yeah, no, it sound, doesn't <laughs> sound terrible. Um, what are the, the those the, the best things that bring you on my life? What I can say is that upon the first pandemic wave. I can say that I have a 300,000 society of uh, women 50 plus. And in the first uh, hit on a pandemic wave, internet lets us to survive together because we were obliged to stay at home. And from everywhere, there was the information, stay at home, stay at home, don't leave home, don't go, and so on. So we were like in the prison. So having 300,000 people, I, I said to myself that it's not enough to say stay at home. So how we can survive at home being cut off from everything. So I started to make an activities on the screen for my society. The first I have implemented with one of the big bank, the program have how to use the uh, finance mobile applications because the My Society was not able to make an e-commerce shopping because they, they didn't have skills. So first I digitalized my um, society Second, we were cut off from the physical activities. So I turned on and every day at nine o'clock, the uh, fitness, uh, have uh, 30 minutes of fitness. Then what uh, I noticed that is a difficult access to uh, health um, help. So I organized with one of the medical, my, my, my colleague, I have a medical background. We prepared the first aid tutorial, 12 parts of first aid tutorial, what to do at home when somebody is not feeling good. So for me and for my society, the most important is for my society because I'm for them, uh, is to educate, is to activate, and is to show to the big society that we exist and we are still active. So I enhance my society in self-confidence being 50 plus, activate them. And I also uh, nobilitate the seniors in the families that we are important. So for me, internet is the something what, uh, let's say, fulfill my real mission I felt two years ago. Wonderful. So building the community and uh, the practical uh, ways of using uh, online services, online technologies uh, to make your life just better. It sounds like from those, you know, startups like 10 years ago, we just want to make a world a better place. Yeah. But somehow, sometimes it's really, it's reworking. And what I can say, and I am very proud of, 
it's the my society is the biggest in Poland in the internet society of people 50 plus and I have a 20 percent of my followers all, all over the world Wonderful. so I wow. have a lot of people maybe from your countries sitting here so the Mondra Babcia is the project, not only Polish project, but definitely it becomes an international project. Wonderful. Franciszek, what, what, what can you say about those good things that came to you because of the uh, technologies and online life? Yeah, for me, internet is, uh, is the tool. I use it for things I want to do. I'm an IT guy. So when I, I when I am repairing something, the internet is a huge knowledge base about uh, computers, phones, or other things I'm repairing. And uh, yeah, it's just a great uh, base of knowledge for, for everything. Like uh, I just got into analog photography and I just... Uh, started to to gather the knowledge from the internet because it's so easy right now you don't have to ask many people in your town how to do this you can just uh, sit down in front of your pc and just or in front of your phone and just uh, start to search for the things but i think that it's uh, because of the uh, because of the ease of uh, of ways of getting things, it's uh, dangerous too, especially for kids like Nicodem said, and I totally agree with him that it, it could be dangerous for kids. And uh, but for from my point of view, I don't think that uh, the, we should uh, give our children hard limits on time they use on the internet. I think that we should uh, spend more on educating them because. Uh, when you give them hard limits, they will want to to break the limits. Like, yeah, we just want to break break the rules, break the limits. We are humans, so I think that uh, we should educate them from the youngest ages, just to to give them knowledge about how they can use internet, about the dangers of the internet, and uh, just to make them feel safe too in the internet. Uh, wonderful. This is very important part that you say. It is a part about um, building relations, yes, also toward technologies and, and the strong relations uh, in families with children, with parents, because we are very often also, well, tutors for our parents or grandparents, yes, how to, how to manage in this digital life are crucial. And Marcin, I would like to ask you those, and well, double question, I may say. First of all, yes, about your um, uh, best uh, practices connected with, with digital life, what you, what you gain thanks to online life, but also how do you try to build those relations, those online relations with your Five daughters once again. Five daughters. It's like super dad, really. <laughs> I agree with uh, Franciszek. Uh, new technologies is only tools, but we uh, must uh, understanding how it works. And uh, the the best way to the understanding for our children is uh, educated. Uh, um, so I think, uh, uh, but mm, one, uh, one moment. Uh, uh, small child uh, likes uh, clever, clever rules. And uh, for them, uh, mm, Strict rules are needed for small child. Yes, like this is what you want to say. Like smaller child needs a clearer rules. Yes. Yes. Uh, you you may be uh, used internet uh, one hour and stop. Okay, for, for them. But uh, mm, mm, but young adults. Uh, <laughs> 
it's not simple for them. <clears throat> So no, I be in the internet with my daughters together. Just being a part of their lives, yes, online. I watching uh, YouTube with my daughter uh, and talking about this film, this movie, this influencer. I uh, talk with, uh, I'm... You are just you are just a part of the lives online and offline. Yes, what I understand. This is one part of this world, that, you know. And and what what internet gave you? What what do you see as the mm. best invention in your life? What's changed your life? Uh, first, I moved uh, my work to home. And this is, uh, and I w working and spending time with my family. Uh, together, it's not possible before pandemic, and this is uh, possible now because of the technologies. That, that, that's, yes, and that's true. I'm working uh, uh, online and uh, recording auditions online. And this is. For me, great. Uh, secondly, uh, this is the window to the world. A uh, few clicks and I'm in Bali. I'm watching sunset. Uh, next few clicks, I'm in, the, in, in Paris in museum. Uh, at next few clicks and I'm in uh, University of uh, America. Uh, and uh, watching uh, astrophysics, uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> and it's just the beginning because, wow, in a few years, probably we will see Web 3.0, Metaverse, and this is going to be a huge change. But right now, we, sh we can use those few clicks and connect uh, with Professor Jacek Brzalski, I hope it's going to work because it's technology. It's always the biggest problems with technology. And Professor will have a small uh, summary of our discussion. Do we have a connection? Oh, yeah. Yes. Good, Good afternoon. Morning. Nice to nice to see you. Uh, I hope you feel well, quite well. So please tell us what do you... Um, manage to um, uh, well uh, compare of your knowledge with our discussion about about this digital well-being I was listening very carefully and with a great uh, interest because normally and mo the most often we ask only young people about uh, digital well-being everybody is concerned about uh, toddlers about about teenagers but this time and i think it's it's a, it was a good idea we ask all the generations so 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 that's advantage that's advantage for sure because um, uh, this discussion reflected that the issue of digital well-being is actually the issue for all of us not only for young people because normally adults say okay we take care about young people and they well, digital well-being taking for granted that we as adults we are we have no problems with this and we are really controlling all of this and and managing all of this quite well and uh, when i was listening i uh, this personal stories very 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 interesting stories on one hand stories on screen time on the other hand stories on the uh, let's say ways to cope with digital well-being i was thinking all the time to what extent it reflects what what we learned from our research during uh, during um, closure of schools during covid we surveyed um, three groups. We surveyed uh, also three, actually two generations, but but a very wide generation because we surveyed young people. Uh, we surveyed teachers and we surveyed parents during during the school closure. And uh, what we learned, we learned uh, uh, very. Um, we learned that uh, the screen time that was discussed in depth during this discussion, the screen time really doubled. 
in all of the groups, not only in young people, but also in, uh, in teachers and in parents. Uh, but we have to remember that the screen time, uh, uh, it's not one indicator of digital well-being. We can have two persons um, with exactly the same screen time uh, with one person uh, in minutes and or hours, yes, <laughs> uh, with one person um, feeling digitally okay and uh, with high level of digital well-being, while the other person at the same time with the same, exactly the same screen time um, ha has nothing to say like this, that I, I'm, I'm that my digital well-being is high. Because it's more about the quality of usage, not the quantity. And it was very much reflected in this discussion. When young people in this discussion, when, when, when teachers, when also the older generation, when you discussed, Everybody was talking about how they use for what, in what places, with whom, in what situations. So even in this discussion, we clearly have seen that this is more about quality, so, so not the quantity. So, so it's not really, it's really difficult to say something like, okay, we've got these this, this, this limits and we can say, okay, this number of hours is healthy. And if we cross the border, it's, it's already, we, we are on the, on the side of unhealthy or, 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 or not, not healthy usage of, of, of uh, digital media. I would say more, and even I would say more, that now we even say more about uh, uh, time online, not screen time, because in many situations we use, we use technologies. So it's time with technologies, but it's not screen time. So the screen, so, so, so we put aside the, our, our mobile instrument, but we listen to a podcast, for example, or, 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 we, or we just run in the forest just with our headphones, so we are online because we, we are listening to some lectures or we are learning language, but okay, it's not a screen time, but certainly and definitely it's the time with technologies. And the last but not least, I would like to say that our research, Zdalne Nauczanie Org, it's, it's the research about remote education, very wide research in 34 schools all over Poland with great big samples of, of, of teachers, students and, and parents. We really, really learned that because we uh, measured digital well-being as such. So we measured this with a proper questionnaire and we have to say that the indicators of problems with this well-being were even higher in teachers and parents than in students. In students, they were high, but in some cases of some indicators, they were even higher in adults. That means that we need a new approach to, 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 the, to the problems. And the approach is to mostly work on digital well-being as our problem, our, I mean, across generations, not the problem of, of, of young people that we try to fix at, as adults, taking for granted that we can do this. So, so we, we need this more, more, let's say, open and holistic approach to, to the problems. Thank you very much for, for the possibility to be there and to, to listen to, it, to this discussion. It was very interesting. And I, I must say very much in line, uh, what was said during the discussion, very much in line with quantitative big surveys we do so, so it, it, I think from my perspective, it, it reflects the true situation, how, 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 how it really looks like. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor. It was really interesting, your summarize. We will have to end our discussion soon, but before ending, there are two more I things. I have one comment, may I? Quickly, quickly. Very quickly, quickly. Uh, thank you very much, Professor, to underline that the older generation also needs, needs the well-being, digital well-being, because the trap is we have more time being pensioners. So if we increase our skills, digital skills, what is good, we, uh, let's say, overdo this. 
because we have time and we become lazy and we stop be to be be we stop being active so please please all projects please include include the silver generation to protect us from over being digital uh, what can i say yes <laughs> thank you yes. thank you in advance and we can see right now the map of thoughts, uh, wonderful, prepared by Agatha. It's, it's gorgeous. I just have to have some pictures of this. Um, well, wonderful, really. And in the very end, we shall also see the results of our poll from Menti. Yes. What are the, what are the answers? Nobody answered. Really? Nobody? Mm, I'm ashamed. You did? And we don't see it? Technologies, as always, the biggest problem. <laughs> and you, you, there is one more comment if we are waiting for the uh, results, is that I feel that we don't feel that we've got a problem to have a too long uh, screen time. So maybe there is no answer because it's it's not me. I don't have a problem. So at least so, one voice. <laughs> at least one voice. I hope this menti will will work in a moment, and maybe after the, after the panel we can uh, put it on the Facebook uh, uh, page under the information about the panel because it's interesting this pool. So once again, thank you. Oh. Yes, it's working. Oh, and it's 28. Yes, I put more attention on my online time. Yes, but I fail. It's 11 and 17. No, I don't feel such a need. So more or less, um, half of the, of the um, people see some problems and they, they pay attention. And I think it's, it's, it's really interesting. And I think it's, quite common to our society so thank you very much once again thank you my dear panelists it was a pleasure to speak with you and i have so many ideas for my online life right now to manage this thank you professor thank you um in the end please participate in the other panels they are so interesting 